Now it's time for the Coach Penny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Best Control. The show is supported by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Subway, make it what you want. And AutoZone. For parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone. Welcome in, everybody. Nice to have you aboard. This was a good week for the Tigers. Two wins, one at home, one on the road, three and one in league play now. Congratulations. Thank you. Although I wish you wouldn't make me nervous the way you have in these last two games, but you are finding a way to win, a will to win. Yeah, that's important. Uh, we definitely got two wins. It's better to talk about two ugly wins than two ugly losses, but yeah, you just have to have that will to, uh, to not give up, not give in, and then pull off victories, and we did that in both games. And I, I got to give a big tip of the cap to the fans. We had more folks in New Orleans than Tulane did. Yeah, and I kind of figured that because of the, uh, the NFC uh, playoff game with the Colts. I mean, I'm sorry, with the uh, Saints and, uh, and the Eagles. And I figured that, you know, with the busloads of fans that we had coming down, plus the donors that were on our plane, that we would have more fans than them. And we did. It was a home game for us. It was, it was a lot of fun. And also good news today, the University of Memphis basketball team has a GPA of 2.9%. Oh, seven. I know this because Phil Stukenborg told me this. That's the greatest GPA in the history of the basketball team. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I'm very proud of that. And, you know, a student athlete. And uh, we're always talking to the guys about doing good in the classroom because there's life after basketball. You know, and that education is the most important thing. And we walk around the classes to make sure that they're in there. We make sure that they're in study halls and they have the highest GPA ever, GPA ever in the history of the Tiger program. That's awesome in my first year. And a couple of guys made the Dean's List. I, there's a kid. I, do you know who this Jaden uh, is? Hardaway. I think that's his name. Yeah. He made the list. Yeah, you got to be proud about all that. All the brains for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Uh, but no, I'm proud of Jaden. Jaden has always been a straight A student. You know, he was a. Uh, He's been brilliant for you know his entire life. Always been straight A's, so he's he's keeping that tradition going at the university. And then David Winget also made the dean's list. I got to ask you, what's his status? Because he's had this broken leg. Yeah, and I'm also proud of David as well. It's been an up and down year with him uh, with the injuries, but academically he's doing well. Uh, right now we're pointing towards maybe a medical red shirt for him, so he can kind of regain his strength and, and get healthy and be ready for, uh, for next year. I right, can't wait to, uh, to finally see him play. In the meantime, here's what's coming up. we got a couple of games. You'll like them both, I promise. A win at home against East Carolina, then on the road against Tulane. Inside access is a little bit of a look at Alex Lomax. The ups and downs of being a freshman. The AutoZone Road ahead one game in town this week will be an SMU team that at the moment has an identical record in the league as do the Tigers. Coming up next, though, the Pirates and the U of M. You're watching the Coach Benny Hardaway Show. First game of the week was another late Thursday night affair at FedEx Forum against East Carolina. This is a team that is surprising a whole bunch of folks. They had just beaten Cincinnati at home, and they thought they could beat anybody. Yeah, you know, you come off a game at home beating a, a powerhouse in our conference like Cincinnati. They had the utmost confidence coming into our building, and they started off hitting, hitting first. And, you know, they had us down in the first half and had us on the ropes. Well, this was a game you started the five seniors. I think it was to send a message. And sometimes the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. You were down right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of disappointed in the seniors' energy. Um, a team that played together. This five played together last year. Started a lot of games together last year. And I was a little disappointed in the energy. And, uh, you know, we eventually picked it up. But I was, the seniors have to start off better than this. You do, you do fight back here. And... Um, th this was a game that was really a team game. Six players in double figures, and it was Tyler Harris who really started to bring it back. He had 16 in this game. Yeah, Tyler had a good game. You know, uh, th as the freshmen go, uh, they're up and down pretty much. That's what happens with freshmen. But this game, he was big for us. Came off the bench for the first time this year and, and, and scored 16 points. And that's what we need from him. We need his outside touch. When he gets hot, that release is just pretty to watch. Yeah, I mean, he's been in the gym his whole life. His father's done a great job of, you know, making him a gym rat, getting in there, shooting so many shots, millions of shots over the years. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that once he gets hot, he can get it going really quickly. Uh, this was a, another game where you had uh, a couple of problems with rebounding right there. You don't have to worry when they go straight through from Jeremiah. 
but this is where we saw a continuation of the Houston problems, especially blocking out on the defensive boards. Yeah, it's something that uh, we have an emphasis on. You, you wouldn't think so because, you know, it's the third game in a row where we've given up 18 and 19 offensive rebounds. But, you know, I think just looking at the guys, a lot of teams shooting three-pointers, a lot of long rebounds. The guards aren't come back and coming back and rebounding. So we're going to have a good long week of, uh, of rebounding and getting ready for SMU. You just saw Keevan. He had his sixth double-double of the year. 14th in his career and he for the fourth time uh, in his career was named to the AAC honor roll this week. He's been pretty consistent particularly offensively. Yeah, Keevan is doing a great job uh, in the classroom and on the court. You know, he's a guy like, like we said, falling off a log, he can get 14 and 10. You know, his great games are going to be 25 and 15, so we keep pushing him to be great every night so he can build everybody else up as well. This uh, was also a game you turned the ball over a few times, so you, you gave up some points off of the turnovers, limiting your possessions, and also those offensive rebounds. So they got a lot more shots than you did in this game. Yeah, it was just a weird game. Like I said, we started the scenes for the first time, and it seemed like they were out of sync. But this is their first time all starting together. But, you know, hopefully we'll continue to get better with that lineup out there and, uh, and, and stop the turnovers and, uh, and get, get, get better at the rebound. The, the great thing here is it could be Jeremiah, it could be Tyler, it could be Davenport. Bruton has been very productive for you. Um, Somebody will will their way and figure out a way. This was a 15-point deficit. Slowly but surely, you come back to take over. Yeah, we have offensive firepower. All we have to do is get a couple stops. And we talk about getting three stops in a row. And then when we get those three, we want three more. So when we get those stops, we have guys that can put the ball in the basket. And uh, we knew that we had a great opportunity to come back. I liked you saw the steal, and there's points off of your defense. And Bruton got killed here. What a great shot. <laughs> Harris, though, went more to the hole. I think you're trying to get him to become more of a, just not a spot-up shooter, but as a full-time player here. Yeah, Tyler has playmaking ability, and we just didn't want him to be a guy that wants to shoot threes because he can make plays as well. So we need, him, we need him to use his speed to get into the paint and make plays like he's starting to do right now. We're starting to see a different side of him, and uh, we love what we're seeing. And on cue, first he makes the pass, then he hits the big bucket, and you guys are on your way to putting this East Carolina team away. Yeah, Tyler's a big shot taker and a big shot maker, and he's shown that this year. And, you know, that run, that shot was a big part of our run to push away from a really good team. 78-72, 2-1 in league play. That's exactly what you want. And I, I know you fight, love the fight in this team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think there's any, um, anybody on our team that doesn't believe that we can win at any moment uh, until the clock goes zero. I mean, we've been there a bunch of times this year where we've been down and we've made runs to come back into the game. Some we've lost. Uh, that we couldn't sustain and keep that run at LSU, but some we've come back, the Yale game uh, being one, where we've come back, and then also the ECU, where we've come back from behind and then pushed away to get a W. Well, you, you talked a lot about punching first. They do in New Orleans. We'll head down to the Big Easy. It was really like a home game. Hey, Rainier Thornton had a big game. We'll show you all the highlights in just a minute. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. To New Orleans we go. This is a good place for you, Fogelman Arena. You average 21 points, 6 rebounds, 6 assists. I'll never forget 1992. The game winner from the corner. You love it then? I do. Uh, New Orleans, uh, at that time, uh, Tulane was one of the top five teams in the country when we played them. And we got a big upset in there. Uh, like I said, I hit a game winning jump shot from the corner. And we had a great crowd on hand, as we already talked about. And you start off. Nicely. Five nothing right off the bat. You never trailed in this game. Yeah, we challenged the guys to come out and, uh, and punch first. We punched first. Uh, Jeremiah Martin got us off to a great start. He was on fire. We moved the ball well. We ran well. Uh, Keevan Davenport ran the floor well. Uh, what we want him to do, get easy transition points and not make everything hard. We want to get easy buckets. And uh, like I said, Jeremiah, with him getting going, uh, that really pushed us out to a great lead. We've had a couple of stretches where guys have taken over. He, Jeremiah did it at the end of the Yale game. Davenport had those 18 straights in the game against Tennessee. 21 of his 27 in the first half here. It was like he could not be stopped. Yeah, that's just leadership. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, I've challenged him every game to come out and play with energy because he's an energy player. He plays with emotions, and when he play, when he comes out with the energy, and his emotions are right, like like we want him to be, he's unstoppable too. I mean, he's the guy that can put the ball in the basket, make plays for other guys, and uh, and really uh, get in the defensive passing lanes and get steals as well. Nice communication there with Harris, 
and the Davenport was quiet on the boards, but he did find ways to score buckets, even though he had some foul trouble. You started Victor Eno in this game. That was a message I thought to Mike Parks and Isaiah Maurice. Yeah, well, I mean, starting with Keevan, uh, he didn't rebound the ball. Probably his worst rebounding game, so we're not really worried about that with him because he can bounce back. Uh, but as far as the, uh, the Victor Eno, uh, we're, we're about earning everything nowadays, and uh, Victor has been playing really well in practice and, and getting the best of the other two guys, uh, Mike Parks and, uh, and Isaiah Maurice, and we wanted to reward him for his hard work. And Martin, as we said, just took over. You will build a 13-point lead here at the half, and yet you make nice adjustments to start the second half. You end up building an 18-point lead in this game, and that's early in that second stanza. Yeah, we, we wanted to come out in the second half, uh, the first three or four minutes, to kind of jump on these guys and not give them any, uh, any room or, or make them start believing. And uh, we, we didn't do a great job of it because they started making baskets and kind of hanging around. And, uh, but we ended, up, we ended up going 18, up 18 first, and then we kind of got relaxed, and then they made the run. They got some good players on this team. You saw Zhang, a kid from China yes. that originally, I believe, signed with UCLA. Yeah, Zhang is a really good player. A lot of good talent. Yesterday was his career high, but he made some really tough shots. And uh, this team's record does not indicate how really good they are, how good they really are. And uh, they're going to beat some teams this year. They're just young and just trying to figure it out. This was a nice game for Rainier Thornton. I thought he needed one. He had eight rebounds in this game, 12 points. He was the best guy on the boards, but he brought you energy. Yeah, I, we need Ray's energy. I think a lot of times his focus goes to offense because he wants to be an offensive player, but he does so much other stuff for us so much, so much better than that. And if the points come, the points come, but he needs to focus on rebounding and getting stops, and then we'll take his offense as well. Most of this game you had a double-digit lead. There's a nice move. We talked about how Harris is trying to get more to the hole. You shot 51% in the first half. That was because Martin couldn't miss. But they did a good job of making an adjustment, and you only shot 38% in the second. Yeah, they came from uh, them kind of, you know, shadowing Jeremiah and, um, you know, us not really moving the ball as much as we did in the first half, and we stopped running. The first half we ran, we got easy buckets. The second half we kind of walked it up, and that's because they got a lot of offensive rebounds and uh, they got layups, so we couldn't really run. But yeah, we want to start. We want to run the entire game to get those easy baskets. And that is a critical bucket. This lead has been squeezed down. First, Martin sets up Maurice. Then Martin goes to the hole. Finally, we can breathe a little easier. Yeah, Jeremiah made two big plays. Like you said, getting into Isaiah and Isaiah with a great finish, and then going to the basket himself to kind of seal the deal. And then the free throws between he and Antoine at the end. That helped us get a much-needed victory on the road. Isn't it great when you can trust a freshman like Jones to go to the line and not miss? Yeah, we have mature freshmen, you know, and I'm, uh, we talk to him all the time, and we've been spending way more time on free throws and trying to get the guys serious. So we, we plan for it and prepare for it, and, uh, and now it's paying off. Time for the Cooks Pest Control Player of the Week. Kind of easy. We could probably give it to him every, every week, and that's Jeremiah Martin. He, again... It gave you, as you said, the leadership that you're looking for and can take over a game when you need it. Yeah, we just need that energy from Jeremiah. He's a, he's a good player. He averaged 19 points a game last year. He's our preseason first team guy, and uh, we need him to play like that every night. He's capable of doing that. His energy is up. His mind is right. You know, he's unstoppable as well. When we come back, time to have a little inside access. Up close and personal, you'll need Alex Lomax. You're watching the Coach Penny Hardaway Show. Alex Lomax is wise beyond his years. He knew when he committed to the University of Memphis that there would be ups and there would be downs. I hear the criticism everywhere I go. Uh, I mean, it's basketball. It's part of the, it's part of the game. You gotta, you gotta hear the criticism. It makes you hungrier. It makes you want to do better. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I came to Memphis. Uh, it makes me tougher as a player. One day in my career, I was going to have to go through this. I'd rather go through it now while I'm young and get used to it. And uh, just keep doing, do, keep doing my thing. Just keep getting better every day. And uh, hopefully, I can make the fans happier and do a better job, but I'm doing it. I'm still going to do everything I can to win games for my coach, my family, and just keep going hard for the fans uh, in Memphis. I'm taking the same approach, uh, doing everything I can, just working hard every day, 
uh, just competing every day, cheering my teammates on, happy for everybody on the team. Uh, like Coach has always told me, sometimes it don't matter who starts, it matter who finish the game. But at the end of the day, if I start, if I don't finish, if I don't play a lot, I'm just going to cheer my teammates on and just and trust the process. Coach, he, know, he knows what he's doing. He's going to do what he can to win the games, and I'm just going to be behind him 100%. I couldn't be more thankful for being in this situation. Uh, I'm just glad to be a college athlete, getting my degree, uh, and playing basketball at a high level. Uh, everything, all of this is just a gift from God, and I, I'm just thankful for that opportunity by itself. What an articulate young man. Very special guy, and I, I know you go back a long way with this young man. Yeah, when I first met Alex, he was in sixth grade. Wow. And the same maturity that he shows now, he was showing back then. And he's always been a kid that's been team first. And uh, the criticism that I do to understand that comes along with college has been unfair to Alex because he's going to always give his best for the team to win the game. And he understands uh, when he had to come out of the lineup that it was time for somebody else and you know to go out there, but he's still gonna do the right things. I taught him how to always be a good teammate in, in the cheer. And when you get your opportunity to go out there and maximize the, the minutes that you have, and that's what he's always gonna do. So we have a great one in Alex Lomax and when it comes to wanting to win championships and win basketball games here. I know he, he ran into a screen in the East Carolina game, has gone through the concussion protocol, did not play uh, uh, at uh, Tulane. Is he going to go uh, next week? Yeah, he'll be ready to go for SMU. He was probably ready to go yesterday, but we wanted to take the precautionary measures. You know, his health is, is, better, is bigger to us than uh, a basketball game just to make sure he was okay. And he was over on the bench talking to the guys and telling them what he was seeing. So he's, just such, he's a total team guy, and he's healthy now. He is a total team guy, that is for sure. One game this week on the AutoZone Road Ahead. We'll talk about SMU in just a minute. You're watching the Coach Benny Hardaway Show. Very simple AutoZone Road Ahead. One game. Thank goodness it's at home. FedEx Forum Saturday. And it's a 3 o'clock game, so you'll be able to enjoy the evening for sure. In comes an SMU team coach that's 11-5, and 3-1, so very much like you. Now, they'll play against Houston at home on Wednesday, and who knows what will happen there. Yeah, they've, they've been playing well. I mean, I, I think that they have a great opportunity to be Houston at home. They have those guys playing really hard. They have some new faces, but... They have some great chemistry with those new faces, and I've watched them play like two or three times this year. They're, they're playing really well. Jim Jankovic always has them playing on fire. He took over for Larry Brown, plays a lot of the similar philosophies, and I know you know those because you, you played for Larry. Absolutely. When you're, uh, when you're under Coach Brown, you're going to have defense first. And you're going to share the basketball, and uh, that's one thing that Coach Brown always teaches. And I know that's what what Coach teaches his guys. And uh, they're moving the ball really well. They're running. Uh, they're going through uh, McMurray, who is a really good offensive yeah. player. He's probably one of the best top five offensive players in our conference. Uh, so it's not going to be easy. Uh, biggest adjustment you want to make this week with your team? Well, we got to get out and run. We have to continue to run. In the first half against Tulane, we ran and we pushed the ball and got our tempo and got up 14 points. Uh, in the second half, we didn't run as much. We need two halves of running, and we got to rebound the basketball. All right, I know you, uh, you'll give it a go. We'll see you right back here next Monday. We'll see you on Saturday at FedEx Forum. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching the Perfect. Coach Benny Hardaway Show, presented by Cook's Pest Control. The show is supported by your local Toyota dealer. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Subway, make it what you want. And AutoZone. From parts to helpful advice, AutoZone has everything you need to get in the zone. AutoZone.